Hi, in this lesson, you'll learn about return values. When writing a function, we can input values by using parameters or user input. Functions also have outputs. So far, our function outputs have been printing things to the console and drawing graphics objects. Let's look at the roll dice function that rolls one die of any number of sides and prints out a random number. The output in this case is the random number printed to the console. So let's say we're running this program and we get a four. Nice. But what if we wanted to use this value in our program? Perhaps we wanted to add multiple dice together or compare a series of dice rolls. Right now, this value only exists in the roll die function and on the console. How can we access this value in the rest of our program? Introducing the return statement. The return keyword sends the output of a function back to where it was called. So going back to our visual, the output is going to be where we want to return. We can replace the print statement with a return statement. This means that the roll die function is returning the random value generated on line five. Let's walk through the program step by step. First, we call the roll die function and pass it an argument of six. We go to the function definition and pass the value of six into the parameter. This also changes line five so that we're picking a random number between one and six. Line five executes and we get a random number, four. Great. And since the value of the variable roll is four, that becomes our return value. So that's when we execute line six. We return the value of four to line two, where we called the function in the first place. And the entire function call is replaced by the return value. So now, we have this lovely value of four, but we aren't doing anything with it at the moment. In order to use this value in our program, we need to store it in a variable. And since our roll die function returned the value of four, our roll one variable now holds the value of four. One last thing, we can make our roll die function even more efficient. Instead of creating a variable to store the value generated by the randomizer, we can simply return the randomizer expression. This makes our function just one line of code. We can return all types of values. In the previous example, we returned a number. We can also return strings and booleans and even graphics objects. Let's take a look at a program that returns a boolean value. The function is off canvas has a parameter of x and returns true if the x value is off the canvas. So the right dot returns true and the left dot will return false. So for our is off canvas function, we basically want to know is the x value greater than get width or less than zero. If it is, then that means it's not on the canvas, so we want to return true. Let's walk through this program. We create a constant variable x position with the value of 500. We then have an if statement that uses is off canvas as a condition. We can use this function as a condition for an if statement because it returns a boolean value. So we call the is off canvas function and pass in the argument x position, which is 500. We go to the function definition and pass in 500 as a parameter. Now we have another statement. Is 500 greater than the width? For our purposes, let's say the width of the canvas is 400. So this expression will evaluate to true. Because this condition is true, we can execute the code inside of the conditional. So we return the boolean value true to where the function is off canvas was called in line three. So the entire function call is replaced with the value of true, which means we execute the code inside the if statement and print 500 is off the canvas to the console. One final note here, just like we did before, we can make this function more efficient. This expression will evaluate to a true or false value. And because we're returning a true or false value, we can return this expression. To summarize, we can input values into functions by using parameters, and we can send the output of a function back to our program by using a return value. Let's head to the editor to continue exploring more examples. In this example program, I have two functions, sum and average. When I call sum56 in main, we see that the program computes the sum of the two numbers and prints it to the console, which is 13. Let's update this function so that it computes the value and returns it to where it's called in main. So instead of console logging total here, we'll instead return total. 
And when I rerun the program, we see that 13 is missing. That's because the return value of 13 is sent back to sum in main. So if we want to see the results, we need to console log our function call. And when I rerun the code, we see that 13 appears. Similarly, when I call average test one, test two, it computes the average of 88 and 95, and then prints the calculation to the console, which is 91.5. Instead of directly consoling in the function, let's write a return statement. To do this, we write return in front of the expression. Unlike the sum function, where we had an additional variable and returned the variable, in the average function, we just returned the expression. The JavaScript interpreter will evaluate the expression and then return the results. So if I rerun the program, we see that the average no longer appears in the console. To see this value, we can either console log the function call, or we can store the function call in another variable. And if we print the variable, we'll also see the results.